Hello guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video we're gonna be performing another experiment using the software AutoCAD. Now the aim for the experiment is to study the rectifier circuit and in this experiment we are gonna be performing uh, experiments on three types of rectifier circuit. That is the half wave rectifier, the center tab rectifier and the full bridge rectifier. So first of all in this video I'm going to be performing the experiment on half wave rectifier and in the upcoming two parts of the video I'm going to be performing the experiment on center tab rectifier and the full bridge rectifier. So I've already performed the experiment in real life for all the all these type of rectifiers and I've shown the output waveforms on my oscilloscope that is my hand tech oscilloscope. So you can just check out those videos by click, by clicking on the pop up i button. So do check them out because they are just really informative videos and just you'll just like really enjoy watching those videos trust me guys so let's just perform this uh, experiment on orcad so and please guys whenever you watch my videos do check the description box because i do link some stuff in the description box below so and those videos can be just really helpful if you want to get the basics of the orcad and the piece spice clear so let's get started let's just open up the orcad software we're gonna go with Orcad PCB Design Professional with PSPICE. I've already made a lot of videos on this particular software, so I'm not gonna cover all the basics, but there are some basics in this particular experiment that I'm gonna be covering. So let's just give, give it some time to open up. Okay, so it has just fired up. Let's just create a new project. And we're gonna name the project as single, or let's just name it as half underscore wave underscore rectifier rectifier underscore trial so let's just create this project and we're gonna create a blank project and I'm really sorry if you're hearing noise in my video because I'm just shooting it really late at night and you can just see the time over here so it is like almost 4 31 in the morning so of course, I just don't want to wake up anyone in my family. So I've just set the gain of my microphone to be really high. So it's just capturing a lot of noise and I don't want the audio to be low in my video. So now this software has just fired up. So now we're just going to import the components. So I'm just going to show you a shortcut. Just press P on your keyboard. OK, so this is going to open up the parts, the parts submenu. You can also open up the parts submenu by going to places and clicking on parts but it's just better to learn the shortcuts so it just makes your life a bit easier now we're going to import um, a voltage source that provides a sine voltage so we're going to type in v sine so this is the ac voltage source that we're going to be using let's just import it just click it drop it here and press exit to get rid of the part then we're going to click then we're going to import diodes so d we're going to go with the uh, one end 4007 diodes so these are the most general type of diodes that we, we have used in a circuits and i've also like performed all the experiments like in the real life experiment that i was talking about uh so i've just performed those experiments on these diodes only so i've used in that video i've used the 1n 4007 diodes so let's just type in 1n 4007 so double click now we're gonna need yeah now we just need one of these tiles so let's just click it over here then guys we need some resistor and we're gonna go with analog resistors just type in r scroll it down a bit now you can see over here r analog so just double click on this you're gonna have yourself a resistor now we have to orient this right so now to orient a part what you can do is either you can just right click on the part and just orient it by just going into the menu etc or you can just press the r key on your keyboard now i'm just gonna press the r key because it's just a shortcut so i'm just like teaching you the shortcut so you can just create the projects really quickly on this software because this software is just dead easy to use like once you get hold of the software so i just placed it here i'm just gonna zoom it in a bit so let's just get rid of the resistor and then we are going to import a transformer now this is the most important part now for example like for importing the transformer first what you have to do is you have to just select the analog library okay just be careful you just have to select the analog library be careful on this part and then you're going to type in xfrm underscore linear okay so just type in xfrm underscore linear 
okay so this is a transformer that we're gonna be using and this is a type of ideal transformer so xfrm underscore linear so double click on this one now you have yourself a transformer so let's just drop it in over here now be careful now please listen to me really really carefully about this part so you don't have to mess up this part otherwise like the circuit won't just simulate properly now you have to just click on this transformer now right click on the transformer and go to edit part now in this edit part a new window will pop up now this is your original window and this is a new window that has just popped up you don't need to touch this touch anything in this thing just click on option and click on part properties now what you're gonna do is for the coupling now we're gonna we want the coupling to be adjustable so we're gonna go with name and value you have to just like click on coupling and then go to display and then click on name and value and just hit ok and similar goes for the inductance value so for example the L1 value that's the primary inductance so we, ju we just have to click on this one and just click on display and we have to click on name and values similarly for the secondary inductance we are just gonna click on this click on display and click on name and value and just hit ok so now we're just gonna hit ok so these are all the changes that you have to make please be really careful you have to make changes in the coupling the l1 value and the l2 value you have to just like click on display on each of these and just change the value to value and something like that the value name and value you have to just change this option from do not display to name and value be careful of this part then just hit ok now you can see we have an option of changing the coupling as well as the L1 value and the L2 value. Now there's a relation between the primary winding and the secondary winding turn ratio and the inductance of the primary winding and the secondary winding. And that formula is right now displayed on your screen. So accordingly, we are just gonna set the transformer to give us a step down, like a step down factor of 10. So we're gonna step down the input voltage by a factor of 10. Now we have to just exit this window just right click on this and click on close it's gonna prompt some warning so you wanna click on be careful just click on update all then click on yes click on yes and then you're all done now guys you can see that our transformer has a lot of options that have been enabled so we can for example change the L1 value the L2 value and also the coupling so you need a few more parts for this particular experiment that is we need another resistor that we are going to be placing along with the power supply that we are taking so this resistor is going to be placed between this power supply so that the transformer winding is not directly connected because this is an ideal inductor and this is an effective resistance of zero so we just need a bit of resistance so i'm just going to set this resistance to 10 ohms not more than that we're gonna change the coupling to 0 0.99 0 0.999 so and we're gonna change the inductor value that's the L1 value to 20 sorry we're gonna change it to 2000 micro Henry and the L2 value we're gonna select as 20 micro milli henry no that's actually milli henry not micro henry so please be careful don't select the micro henry values because otherwise uh, you, you'll have problems with your simulation the transformer ain't gonna handle the current demands of a circuit so you have to be careful you have to just select the uh, inductance to be a bit higher so we are gonna select the primary inductance to be 2000 milli henry and the secondary inductance to be 20 milli henry so this is gonna give us an effective reduction in voltage by 10 times so the voltage at the secondary winding is going to be reduced 10 times so let's just wire everything up i'm just going to click w to enable me to wire each and everything so this is a shortcut you can also use this option right here on the palette but better to use shortcuts because this just makes life much more easier just press w on your keyboard now you can see the crosshair has just appeared now just wire everything up now resistor is going to connect over here the diode is going to connect from secondary winding to the resistor this is going to connect to the resistor and the negative is going to connect to the secondary winding, the primary winding and let's just add our ground so we're going to type in g and d you're going to select the zero 
CAPSYM. So this is going to set us to set the reference voltage to be zero volts. And we're going to do it at both the sides so that we can just measure at both the sides using this reference. And we also need VCC. So we're going to have some, we're going to need some voltage points. So on which we can measure the voltage. So we're going to type in VCC and over here you can see VCC CAP SYM. So click on this and press hit and, and then press OK. So we're going to add it one over here, one over here and one over here. So what it will allow us to do is to monitor three different types of voltages. So this is the voltage that we're getting out of our function generator. This is the voltage like this is the voltage that we are getting out of function generator in the simulation environment. But actually it is the mains power like this is the frequency that like this is the power that we are getting out of the wall adapter. What the fuck? Just got this one. So at this particular point, so at VCC over here, so we're going to get the voltage that is coming out of our function generator. So that's going to be 170 volts. So let's just change it to V main. So that's going to be the mains voltage. So over here, we're going to change it to V in. So that's going to be the input voltage that the secondary winding is in. Like it's going to be, it's going to act as an input voltage for our rectifier circuit. And then VCC. Now let's just change it to V out. So this is going to be our output voltage. Now let's just change the parameters of our function generator. So over here, voltage offset, we're going to type in zero because we don't want the voltage to be offset. Voltage amplitude, we're going to select 170 volts because it's the peak voltage of your sine wave. So uh, the the mains the mains uh, the mains voltage that you receive is 120 volts RMS. So the peak value is going to be 170 volts. So we're going to type in that. The frequency is going to be 60 hertz. And now we are all set. Now we can just fire up the simulator. I just forgot to wire up the ground, so let's just fire up the grounds as well. So now we can just fire up our simulator. Now you can create a new simulation profile. Just name it as trial or whatever you'd like to call trial underscore one. I'm just going to name it like this only create. Now we have an option of editing the profile. So what we need to do is time domain transient. So we are not just going to perform the DC sweep over here. Neither way you're going to perform AC sweep. We are going to perform the time domain transient. So this is essentially like an oscilloscope. So what it's going to do is it's just going to um, simulate a circuit with respect to time. So it's just going to monitor all the voltages that are present in a circuit with respect to time. So we have to just select the runtime. So according to the frequency that I've selected, so it's just going to give us a time period. So I've just already calculated it. So the time period is going to be 16 milliseconds. So that's the time period of one wave of the sine wave. So what we're going to do is so runtime, we need at least four waves to analyze the circuit properly. So I'm just going to set it to 80 milliseconds and the maximum step size i'm going to set it to 0 0.1 millisecond because it's just going to give us a more precise graph please be careful to set it to 0 0.1 millisecond if you want a precise graph the maximum step size to be 0 0.1 millisecond otherwise the graph is not going to be as precise so we just mo want more sample points in our graph so just click on apply and click on ok now let's just run our simulation Now over here on the simulation window, we're just going to go to the, we, we, we're not going to change the access settings. We're just going to go to trace, add trace, and then let's just hide all the other things that we don't need. We just need the voltages. So what we need is first of all, let's just see what our V main and V in looks like. So this is going to be the transformer. So this is going to be V mains is the input of the transformer and V in is going to be the output of the transformer. So as you see, over here you can see this is just looking beautiful. So this is our mains voltage and this is the output that we're getting out of the transformer. So this is going to be 12 volts RMS and this is going to be 120 volts RMS. The green one is going to be 120 volt RMS. If you want to like measure this thing, you can just go to trace and go to cursor and go to display. Now you just have to click on the screen and now as you click on the screen, you can just drag this cursor here and there. It's just going to tell you the values that you're getting at particular points on a table that's just shown 
on the bottom right corner of your screen over here you can see this is the table on which we are getting the values so for example at green we are having the value of 169.969 and on the red we are having a value the peak value at the current stage like the uh, where the cursor is kept is around 16.753 so this is how we're gonna get the value so this is how you can do the measurements and all so let's just remove the cursor for a while I hope we can remove this cursor let's just delete all the traces for a while and now let's just analyze our circuit so we're gonna display our V in and V out so we are gonna click on both of these so both of these are present in the trace expression so both of these are gonna be plotted so I'm just gonna do it one more time so click on V in and then click on V out so both of these are gonna be present over here in the trace expression just hit on enter now you can see as a voltage is in the positive cycle the output voltage will just bump like will just follow the input voltage uh, because the diode like acts as a one-way valve so on the positive side the diode is going to conduct electricity but there is a difference because there's a bit of a diode voltage drop that's around 0 0.7 volts in case of the 1 and 7 1 and 4007 diode so this is going to be a bit of a voltage drop and over here you can see uh, on the negative uh, on the negative half cycle so the diode is gonna block all the voltage and and the similar trend just continues so it just blocks it just chops off the negative voltage so let's just remove the trace again delete all traces and then let's just analyze the output trace only now you can see over here it's just bumping up and the negative half has been chopped off so now let's just add a capacitor to the circuit and then we are going to simulate the circuit again so let's just minimize this tab and let's just add a capacitor so we're going to type in C so now double click on the C analog now click on R to rotate it and we are going to place it over here the capacitor we are going to place over here let's just wire up the capacitor to the circuit now in this video I've just explained a lot of basics so but in the next videos I'm not gonna be explaining that lot of a basics I'm just gonna go straight away to the simulations now we're gonna uh, name uh, like we're gonna set the value of this capacitor to be 220 microfarad microfarad okay so now let's just simulate our circuit again P spice run let's just see what type of trace we are getting at this point of time like after we have added the capacitor let's just add a trace and we're gonna see V in and V out so we're gonna click both of these and hit on enter now you can see over here when the sine wave arises so the voltage at the output is gonna follow it and then the capacitor is gonna get charged due to the sine wave and now as you can see the output now for example now we just saw that the rectifier output just drops to zero volts so the capacitor is just holding the charge is just supplying the charge to the capacitor so therefore the voltage is going to drop steadily and then when the negative and then when the next uh, positive cycle occurs the capacitor is going to charge back again and then just drop gradually so we are going to see a positive voltage bump so we can also decrease this bumps by increasing the value of the capacitor so let's just increase the value of the capacitor to 2200 microfarad instead of 220 microfarad hit enter run and we're gonna run the simulation again go to trace add trace and then V in V out click hit on enter now you can see we are having a perfectly straight line almost a perfectly straight line so this is our output waveform so it's almost ripple free however you can see a tiny teeny bit of ripples over here so this is just looking perfectly like it's just looking awesome and this is all what you have to do in the circuit so this is just a dead easy circuit to uh, assemble and simulate so let's just now start with some of the more complicated circuit in the next part so i'm just gonna make two more parts of this video so see you guys in the next video till then don't forget to like share and subscribe and please if you know some of the friends that are facing some problems in operating this software etc so you can just share my videos to them also because it might just help them and i also like like helping helping people so that's my goal of the channel because i just like helping people so i upload the videos so thanks of thanks for watching guys so see ya